So from the gain knob, on most consoles, even the least expensive analog consoles all the way up through the highest end studio consoles, right after the gain knob, there's usually a high pass and a low pass filter. So before we work our way down the channel strip and start talking about the fader and a bunch of other tools, we've got simple things like a high pass and low pass filter that can help us really shape the tonality of a signal. Yep. So why don't you guys talk about what they are what is, what's the difference between high and low? Because some people get it backwards. Right. And then what is it best designed to do? What's cool about the high pass and the low pass, and, and forever, most analog consoles only had a high pass. Right. Um, and that's basically cutting out the low end. So it's opposite from what you think it might be, um, but it's letting everything above where you're marking it pass. Letting the highs pass. Letting the highs pass is the way to think about it. Yeah. And it's cool, uh, some, we've, I think we've all been a part of some tutorial sessions where you can actually build a mix with decent inputs and only use high pass filter and get them reasonably cool. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's that effective. So sometimes if you look at your console and go, I don't know what that is, I'm not gonna mess with it. This is something to really pay attention to. Yeah. What's cool in most digital consoles is that there's a low pass. So now everything lower than the setting you hear, you pass. So everything above the mark, you won't hear. So we can demonstrate that pretty easily here with just some simple pink noise. So pink noise is coming through and you can just see that the EQ is flat, there's nothing on it, but Lee's just gonna start applying some high pass filtering to the low end. So, so you hear how all that low information disappears just from what goes you're away. hearing. Yeah. And that is, I mean, that is critical. So you take, talk about a kick drum. You want your kick drum to be awesome, but it's starting to feed back in all the subs. Right. A little bit of that is helpful. A vocal. Yep. That's starting to rumble and all, and feed back and go crazy. You can clean that up with that easily. So now if we do the low pass filtering, that's what's really cool. So, Think about that. If you're having a mic that's just so sizzly that it's just falling apart, do you yeah. guys hit the, I hit this all the time. A lot, yeah. And we had someone on our podcast one time say, like, don't forget the low pass filter. Yeah. And it was, and I, I was like, wow, that's something that even I forget sometimes when you're in a hurry because you can clean up some crazy feedback issues by doing that. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I probably have a high pass filter on every input. Yeah. Yeah. Kick drum, bass guitar. Everything. It's probably on everything. It's, it's, if it's not something I have actively engaged, it's on ready to go. It's ready to go. Like yeah. it maybe yeah. a track input that I've already cleaned up or yeah. something. But yeah, I would think every single thing. I mean, you can even put them on outputs too. So you want to yeah. clean up a, an in-ear mix going to someone's in-ear pack. You could take some of the rumble and stuff out of it just real discreetly yeah. with a high pass filter. And as you get, as, as you want to start to talk to your volunteers about quick ways to sort of start being able to anticipate decisions that they might need to make, a great way to do that is to just, as an exercise, okay, figure out what would I for sure want a high pass filter on and what is the tonality That's great. below <laughs> which I don't need to hear. So, yeah. for example, preset your snare drum, your hi-hat, yeah. your overheads, your vocals. Right. Because those might be different frequencies put them, put at which you put, put them in the ballpark. Yeah. Because you know, hey, for my overheads and my hi-hat and other things that are more high-frequency based, I can crank that up to way higher than I would on a bass guitar and or right. a kick drum and, you know and vary it. You know what's interesting? I don't know if you guys have found this judicious use of a high-pass filter, trimming low end out of a lot of the inputs on the desk makes your low end content more clean. Yeah, or for sure. Or sounds more clean. Absolutely. Because there's all this rumble and stuff that's gone away. Yeah. And now all you hear is the things you want to hear in that low register. And also, don't be afraid to take this high pass filter high. way up into here sometimes. Maybe just, a high hat mic. I just got scared a little bit. I know, but it's because <laughs> you're looking at it and you're not listening. There you go. <laughs>